assholes gonna get penalized for that? They, they absolutely are not. Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Welcome back to Forza Motorsport. Today, taking you back into some online racing, I decided to jump into the Touring Car Series and do some races. I did a number of races the day that I recorded this, uh, and I'll be doing a series of videos from it. I figured I'd bring you the first race, uh, and it's, I think, an interesting one. It shows the process that I'm going through to try and learn the tracks, uh, while also hoping to become competitive online. Um, we'll make some note of some things as we go forward, but hopefully you'll just come along for the ride and enjoy this roller coaster of an adventure. As you know, the most important thing before you get into any online race is making sure you select the right livery for your car. <laughs> I decided I wanted to go with the Subaru. My first car uh, was a Subaru, so I decided I'll rep Subaru in the touring car race and went and found the classic Subaru Rally Livery and decided to paint up my car before I jumped online. So starting out, I'm going to be doing some practice laps to kind of learn the course because I've raced on the uh, Mid-Ohio before. There's a lot, you can hear talking, exciting crests. A favorite for drivers and racers. Because I don't know this track very well, or I didn't coming into this, I actually didn't really like it because it's got a lot of blind hills and turns. Um, so basically, it's really hard to drive blind. You really need to know the course to drive it well. Um, so these first few practice laps are going to be me learning the course, and I'll show you kind of some of the uh, mistakes that I made. You'll see kind of off to a slow start. Um, but then I'll show you my, as I improved my better qualifying laps. So as I'm starting my first flying lap here, we're uh, basically learning the course. Just, you'll see me making some awkward turns, jumping ahead here. You'll actually see as I'm looking at the track there, the lines leading off to that alternate track for the course. I almost turned right with that, just following the tire marks. And you'll see that comes into play later in this, as uh, I break real early for this turn, not sure where to start. Figuring out breaking points for turns is a critical component of getting fast laps, as well as turn-in points. Um, that is a blind crest there that uh, you have to come over really slow in this car in second gear, otherwise you go off that side really easily. So this is just showing you some of those early learning lessons I'm having. Coming around uh, this corner, there's a little crest here that you accelerate down, and as you come up, there's a right-left complex here, up some elevation. Again, a blind left-hander, and I don't know where the road's going, and just don't break enough and turn into that corner. So the trick to this course is just being able to not just know the turns when they're coming up, because they're over blind hills, but also playing a lot with the weight of the car over those elevations. When the car gets light coming up over hills, you have to be very careful, because you could lose traction. So with my first flying lap, a 147.7 in the books, um, you can see I'm figuring out some of these breaking points. Here there's a slight change in coloration on the track where you can see tire marks where people start to brake. That's actually a really good indicator for where to break into this turn, but you really shouldn't rely on it in a race, and you'll see why later on in this video. But needless to say, I figured out after this race, I've got to find a better marker for that turn than the marks on the course. Here, I was anticipating the left, but got too far off to the right when my tires hit the grass. Uh, again, just just pulled that traction out. The getting off track in this game is very punishing, um, as you'd expect. But if you just put a couple of tires off, you will easily lose control or or just completely uh, slow down and, and ruin your lap. So uh, another theme you'll see in this is some spicy drivers, um, as the the second fastest car comes by me right here, but slowly but surely my laps are improving. That one's a 138.6. Coming around on my next practice lap, 137.5. So as I'm learning the course, getting better times and, and making improvements, which is really the key. I'm trying to get to the point where I feel like I know the track well enough to go into qualifying. So 138.5 on that one. And getting more consistent, although still not quite up to pace. So on this lap, I decided to duck into the pit. I've never used this pit lane before. <laughs> so when it auto-drive takes over, it takes me into the wall. 
Because of the length of this race, 11 laps and the tire wear, you do have to make a pit stop to change tires once during the race. Um, in this instance, I knew I was doing it, so I wanted to A, practice going into the pit lane, and B, I switched from the, I believe the medium compound I was on first to the soft compound to try a couple of laps. Now that I know the course pretty well, I want to see what my pace can be on the softer tire, if I'm going to get an improvement from the tire compound uh, before I try and head into set a qualifying lap. But getting into a little bit of traffic uh, in this practice session, again, it's not a qualifying, so you do have to deal with other cars that are out practicing, but as I come around this first lap, uh, my first lap after my out lap on the sauce, and I manage a dirty 136.3. My next lap, 134.5, so both my familiarity with the course as well as the softer tire definitely contributing to increases in my lap times. And very happy with the progress I'm making here, starting to feel comfortable enough with 12 minutes left in the practice session. Um, although coming over that hump, it's been pretty safe for me most times, but because you get light coming over that, I did manage to cook it a little bit too hard going in there. So I now also have to be careful of my acceleration coming over that turn. So moving on uh, to try and finish out this lap before we're ducking under 10 minutes in the practice session. I set a personal best 134.4 and decide it's time to jump into qualifying and see what I can do to set a best lap. So as I go into this first qualifying lap, I'm trying to focus on not repeating the mistakes that I've had on, this, on some of the troublesome corners. So for instance, on this corner, as I'm coming up left, I know that it's anticipating coming up right, so I get down into third gear, make that left turn. I'm leaving a lot of speed on the corner there, but I forget that I need to break into this second gear, a uh, big right-hander. So my first qualifying lap is a complete write-off, um, and you only get three qualifying laps to uh, give it a shot. So you really need to make sure that you set a good qualifying lap on your first one, um, and then you can push it on the out ones. But Immediately on my second qualifying lap, I cook it too hard coming out of that first turn. I figured I'd try to cut that uh, barrier or that curb from the pit lane, which I hadn't done before. Did not work out. So now I've got one lap to do it. I cut that lane again. I'm not really going to recommend doing that, just for my sake. But this will be my only good qualifying lap and my best qualifying lap. So let's ride along and see how I go as I'm breaking down at about the 75 meter mark. Going into that corner, second gear turn, coming around this one, and then it's trying to get on the power early out. I'm still not great at this course, even with uh, several races under my belt. Uh, so definitely at this point, not super experienced on this track. Not accelerating out of turns as well as I could. I don't have my braking points right on. Here I can see that mark on the road where the braking point starts. Before I've done that, this guy did not break as early. A common problem on that. Um, breaking down again into second to come around this blind hill. Again, these key corners that I know I need to be careful with. Coming in, trying to kiss these apexes, trying to get low enough speed that I can hit the apex on every turn. That's really kind of the tricky part, at least for me, on making a good line, is I want to go so fast around every turn. If you go faster through the turn so that you can't cut in and hit the apex, you actually have slower laps. So here I come up into this left-hander over this hill, Anticipating it, get into that apex. I'm leaving a lot of acceleration on the road there, although you do have to connect it to this right-hand turn. So a decent line, not horrible, but I'm again trying to be safe here to at least set a qualifying lap that'll count for the race. Accelerating across the line, 135 knot. Um, about 0.6 off my best lap from practice, but again, wanted to be conservative since I left it to my third lap to not be a dirty one. and. Got day 135.082. Not good. You can see the times here. I'm not competitive. I wouldn't find out until later that really tuning is the key to this since most of the cars uh, can't be modified. You can't add parts, but you can tune them. Um, but I have not played with that yet. Anyway, jumping back out into one last practice lap before the race starts. Jumped another 134.4, my personal best. So feeling pretty good with my comfort level in this car on the track heading into the race. So as the drone shot flies in, you'll see Wheezy sitting down here in a beautiful P18. Fantastic result for me, uh, getting ready to head into this race. So as I mentioned, this race will require pit stop, so I'm selecting my fuel uh, and my tires. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the softs in this, 
And I'm giving myself more than enough fuel. I actually, one of my first online races, uh, ran myself out of fuel. So I'm trying not to repeat that. And I'm not so competitive right now that uh, my fuel weight is really going to impact the outcome of the race. So rather just not run out of fuel than worry about saving a few extra kilos on the car. So starting P18, I accelerate out in the start, get a little bit here. And now the beginning of these races, especially from the back, is a giant cluster. So I'm trying to stay out of the melee and just survive these first few turns, hopefully gain some positions from the carnage and not get taken out myself. So as we go into the second turn, this first hairpin, and predictable carnage, just smoke and cars everywhere. This guy comes out of the smoke, little touch on him, uh, unavoidable, not much I could do, as a car's kind of slamming into me a bit here, but survived the first couple of turns. Cars are starting to line up a little bit. Some guy yeets every cone off the track, <laughs> cutting the grass a little bit too closely there. Uh, moving into this next big spot, I'm trying to break a little bit earlier here because, again, I can't really pick out that braking spot very well. A couple people sail it off far off the track. Re-entering the track dangerously is one of the big problems here as someone goes off wide. They did not pay attention to that second-hand turn. Another guy uh, trying to cut back in who missed it. That Red Bull that I, we just watched go off re-enters the track by slamming into me. So if you go off track in an online race, re-enter carefully. This whole, oh, I went off the track, so I'll just swerve back on the track at full speed wherever I am. Not bueno, not bueno. Um, so anyway, things are kind of settling out. It's currently P13, so managed to gain five positions and pick up no penalties uh, in this first lap so far. There's another car, cooks it a little bit wide. You can tell some of these controller players because they can lose the car wide off the track and recover really easily. That's not very possible with the wheel because on the controller, if you just push the joystick all the way to one side, you basically can go hard lock to hard lock in the car instantly, which is of course not possible uh, on a wheel with a 900 degree rotation. But the Red Bull car goes in. I try to avoid them, but they both slide the width of the track and I end up clipping Captain Red Bull on the way by. A little bit of karma. Moving back up into P11 and uh, back into this first hairpin as things are settling out a little bit. Guy cuts up inside, but that's a fair play. Uh, I kind of hurt him to my side. I should have given him a little bit more space when I noticed he was there. I gave way. He definitely got the better line into that corner and a fair overtake by a quirky karma. 62 6 so again, just trying to keep my line clean, try to have a clean race. I go wide on this, break a little bit late. That allows another car behind me to take that, so I lose a position back to P13. Give a little contact on him, trying to break through that turn. Nothing too bad, he manages to maintain that position. And just, again, trying to have some clean racing, make sure that I'm being uh, a better racer, a better driver. So we have another car off the track here. We come around, we see that our good friend Der Doof Dick managed to lose it on the track. <laughs> oh god, you gotta love Xbox. Um, but yeah, just trying our best, especially in this kind of learning phase of online racing. Just be a clean driver, a respectful driver, and the speed and the technique will come with experience on these tracks as we're really just trying to not lose contact with this group of cars ahead and see if we can keep up and regain some positions. So now on to lap three, accelerating down towards the hairpin with three cars ahead. And as we approach up to this corner, you'll notice that one of the cars decides that he doesn't really want to turn. He goes right off the track as we get a nice clean braking line through there. But much to our surprise, he decides he wants back on the track. And so <laughs> just punts right into me, re-entering the track. He does get a two second penalty for that. But you can see he's gained those positions. Now there's two cars between me and him. So he didn't break, ran off track, slammed into me getting back onto track, stayed, and made me lose two positions. And all it cost him was a two second penalty. So a lot of issues with the penalty system in Forza currently, but you know, this stuff's gonna happen. Sadly, a lot. Sadly, nothing to do for it now. We just gotta put our head down, try and race clean. Presumably, these two cars in front of me now are actually slower than I am, considering they were behind me before. So now my goal is just to have clean laps and to see if I can overtake um, and retake those positions. Uh, I did pick up a position there uh, up into P13 as I think someone had pulled into the pit lane. 
Uh, again, tire wear going to be a factor. A stop will need to be done in this race. And uh, yeah, continuing on to lap four, running on these soft tires. So as we head back into the hairpin, there's a car coming up from behind. And as I'm making my turn through the line, I just get absolutely done dirty by three cars who all slam into me. What and the fuck. <laughs> These assholes gonna get penalized for that? They they absolutely are not. I just got <laughs> raped by three cars and they got no penalties for that. Apparently clean overtakes all around. So coming back across the line to wrap up lap number four uh, from P16, I do manage to gain a couple of positions from cars pitting. Uh, my cars aren't, my tires aren't quite uh, in a bad state yet, um, so we'll see where I'm going with my pit strategy. Uh, one of the cars that pitted does still come out in front of me, um, but we're up into P14 now, uh, starting to see some minor tire wear here on our tires, uh, signaling our tires are getting close to end of life. There is not a big gap between minor wear and severe wear in this game, as I was learning. Uh, did not necessarily know that at the time. So as we come around towards pit lane here, you'll see my tires are low. I bypass the pit. I decide I'm going to try and sneak one more lap out of these tires. We're going on to lap six. So my thought process here is if I can push these soft tires for six laps, then that means I push them for half the race and I can pit and take another set of softs and hopefully keep that pace. But as I'll find out here, as my tire wear gets more severe, uh, the amount it's going to cost me um, from losing traction on these tires is not really going to be worth it. As this time, deja vu of earlier, this guy passed me on that corner. This time, not a clean overtake. He pushes me wide, uses me to help turn, and uh, I'm on to moderate tire wear. Uh, he's on to P13, and I'm on to slightly more agitated at shitty Forza drivers. So as we're wrapping up, lap six here my tires are well and truly done i'm several seconds off the pace trying to no, off my pace many more seconds off of everyone else's pace um so duck in since i do have five laps remaining uh i decide to throw on the softs again since the first set made it six laps um you can really do five laps efficiently on these soft tires so the right strategy for this race is either medium to soft or soft to medium but uh, I decided to try a soft, soft strategy, and hell, I'm P16, so what have I really got to lose? So fast forwarding to lap eight, got a couple cars ahead of me going into the hairpin. One of them goes left on the right hairpin, a bold strategy, Cotton, probably not going to work out for him. I do manage to break and turn into that one, so I do manage to move up P15. So again, just focusing on trying to make clean laps and just slowly but surely win back as many positions as I can. And probably more importantly than anything, gaining experience, not just on the track, but just in general with racing in the game. So moving forward now into lap nine, so we're cl getting closer to the end of the race. And I start to get some pressure from a car coming up behind. Uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, closing in as I get to the hairpin. So I'm gonna try and break late into the hairpin, uh, but I do leave the line inside wide open. So even though I break a little bit late, he does get the position, a little bit of contact. I'm going to try and undercut him and out-accelerate him, but his car just out-accelerates me there, so I tuck in. That Audi is quite a bit faster than this Subaru, um, so he's just able to pull away. So I'm going to tuck in behind and basically just try to do my best to keep up with him, have clean laps and overtake. There, you saw me break way early with him directly in front of me. I couldn't see that marker I was using on the track for the braking zone there, so I braked extra early. You will see that that also comes into play again later. And uh, yeah, so just trying to overtake Mr. Beatles here, uh, who looking back was actually one of the three who did me dirty earlier on, but uh, I don't realize that at the time and I'm really just trying to have a clean race here and look for a good overtake. So coming into this turn, I'm gonna try to get underneath. Um, I'm worried he's gonna come down into me and even though I probably could have made that line stick, at this point, I honestly just don't wanna get run off the road again. Uh, as he kind of made a move down, I didn't know if he was going to leave me room. But definitely trying not to run into the back of him. Trying to get a run off this corner. Get a little contact as he breaks hard into that. So hopefully I can make a run down past the start line as we go on to lap 10. Uh, I do have a little bit of a lead there. And decide to not try and use the pit lane this time. 
and accelerate out of it. Just having a really good, clean battle up to this point with beetles in the Alphatari. So I'm looking for opportunities up and down these turns, trying to stay clean, maybe a little less composure than I would like to have here. Instead of being strategic and looking for opportunities, just trying every corner. But as we approach the hairpin, I'm looking for my braking zone again. The car's on it. I can't see it. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Just do not break into that turn. Go hard into the back of the Alphatari. Spin all the way around. A well-earned four and a half second penalty for the wheeze. And limping myself back onto the track in great shame p17 to the point where i'm so focused on my mess up that i just run it off the track again karma in full effect here as i'm just so so deeply ashamed of my horrible horrible actions trying to compose myself well enough just to finish the lap coming up to my dreaded corner and i just don't even think to slow down in time and we're going from bad to worse, as even the car in P18 closing the gap on me as we're coming through towards the end of lap 10 with still one lap to go. So I need to basically just pull myself together, put together one solid lap, forgive myself for my crime, and limp my way home to a well-earned P17. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Wow. Straight to jail. Can I apologize? <laughs> Can I apologize to these people? Because I murdered that guy. Alright, well, that was almost okay. 